Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm doing an analog product review. So a few weeks ago, I received an email to the old YouTube channel thing that I got going on here, asking me whether or not I'd like to review the Kodak Scanza film scanner. And you know what? Absolutely. I'm gonna take a look at the Kodak Scanza. And this is uh, the first time I've done a review. They did not pay me to do this review, they just gave me this scanner. So let's take an honest but fair look at this thing. So the Kodak Scanza is kind of like an entry level, lower tier home scanning solution for doing things like film negatives and mounted slide film. Now the Scanza is not the only product out there that fulfills this niche, but I think a little bit more on that later. So the Scanza is really meant for and tailored towards people and family members and like older people who aren't necessarily like photographers or film addicts, but just want to be able to see these pictures again. Now I'm gonna get into like the details and show off some samples, but ultimately the Scanza is rough. But I would say for scanning mounted slides specifically, it's okay. It's not hard to use. I can plug it into a TV. I can do that thing where it will like play a slideshow of the images that are on the SD card that I've just scanned. And it's a very cheap option in comparison to maybe sending away a massive amount of slides or old photo collections to be digitized by professionals or labs because that kind of stuff can get very expensive very, very quickly. But let's dig into this thing and see what it is, what it does, and probably a little more who it's for. All right, so the outside is a kind of nice yellow and black color scheme Kodak box design. Once we crack the box open, inside you've got your USB power cable, a TV cable, the Scanza unit, an HDMI cable, plug adapters, so you can use it in a variety of regions, this brush, foam stick thing to be able to clean the inside of the unit and the film holders. The Scanza itself is light, it's kind of plasticky, it's not amazing build quality, but also I mean I'm not expecting like a metal encased piece of industrial machinery here. Now the main thing is it's easy to get up and running and that is the key here. We've got plugs for a wall outlet, we can go straight into a computer with the USB cable or you can even run this thing off a portable USB battery. So you can finally scan all your slides outside in the wild if you really want to. In the back, you've got your plug options, your SD card slot, and your TV options. So we can just put in a normal SD card and that's all you need in order to save your images onto it. And of course, you can plug it into a TV. You can either just use a normal video cable, which is for older TVs, or you can use an HDMI cable, which is of course for HD TVs. Now we've got some menu options here to go through. You've got your capture button here, you've got power, and you've got some settings. Now importantly, this is where you set the type of film that you're scanning. We can cycle through our film types to select based on what we're scanning. So the options here are normal color negative film where it will automatically be inverting the negatives for you. It can also do slide film, which is mounted slide, so it will just capture the image straight up without inversion. And it can do black and white negative, which also means it is, again, inverting the film for you. You have options for eight millimeters, super eight, 126 film, 110 film, and 35 millimeter film, but not on every format. So like if for some reason you actually use this thing for scanning super eight, then you can only tell it to scan super eight slide film, but you can't really get it to scan super eight color negative. You can also choose between 14 megapixels and 22 megapixels for quality. Now the file size is really only a little bit bigger for 22 though, so you may as well just stick to that and push for as much quality from a small scanner like this as you can. Okay though, let's scan. It's scan time. First off, these film holders are rough. So this holder is only for eight millimeter and super eight and it just goes in the front slot of the unit. All the other ones go into the side of the unit. You also have a negative holder, which just holds film by itself. And inside of the negative holder, it can also hold the 110 insert for just 110 negative film as well. Then there's the slide holder, which holds mounted slides. And in that one, you can also put the adapter that holds 110 mounted slides. You can also use this holder for 126 mounted slides as well. And this one just does slides that are in a thicker slide mount. But the problem here is that they're just like basic plastic and they're not really very smooth 
And for film that isn't a mounted slide, there is going to be a lot of points of contact where the film can get scratched in these holders. Negative film just sits in the holder and there's not really a groove or anything to help with positioning so it's a little sloppy. And it's also just like dragging along this like grooved grid plastic. The manual itself gives you like a brief explanation of like the holders and the film that it can scan. But I think the manual overall could probably be like a little bit clearer. I definitely fiddled around with exactly like how things sit in the holders a little bit before like getting to a point where I was like, okay, we're scanning. Now also as a note here, you can't exactly trust the LCD screen on this thing for color accuracy. Color is gonna look different across different screens depending on what you're using to look at your image. The color of this stuff is gonna look different on a laptop, on a tablet screen, a phone screen, a TV, and if you have a physical print made. So be prepared to do some editing after scanning on this stuff. The Scanza lets you adjust brightness and then there's red, green, and blue color options as well. These corrections are really basic and going too far either way with the color is like super, super intense. So go really light with this. The brightness is useful though on negatives because you can recover shadow or highlight detail. The Scanza itself kind of does have a mind of its own, and it likes to just automatically guess how bright everything should be. Then you can press the capture, save button, and that's it. It's on your memory card. The Scanza doesn't have like frame detection options on it, so you just kind of have to position everything the best you can and then crop later. It also doesn't have any sort of dust control. This is big. Dust on film when scanning at home is a big thing and it can be a struggle to deal with dust even on things like flatbed scanners that use like an infrared scanning to remove it. The Scanza comes with this little padded brush that you just sort of shove into the unit and use to wipe off the light pad on the bottom the best that you can. It's admittedly a little rough in terms of like dust and cleaning but you know just kind of get in there, wipe it off, jiggle it around the best that you can. Be prepared to end up having to clean up your scans in a program like Photoshop for best results. Scanning slides is ultimately where this thing shines the most though. The slide holder isn't anything special either, but the key here is that the film isn't coming into contact with the actual surface of the holder, so there's way less chance of damage. Again, it kind of awkwardly sits in there, but what are you gonna do? And for the colors here, you can try and adjust again a bit using the built-in options, but it's hard on the unit. The brightness control doesn't really do too much for you with slides, but that's just kind of because with slides, a lot of the time what you see is what you get. The thicker slide mount holder though is pretty weird. Like they just sort of slide through it and it's awkward to position and it doesn't open. It's just like weird. So here are some scans. These aren't meant to be crazy quality and you can only get so sharp with this thing. You're not gonna see the grain detail here. Things are smooth and they lack the sharpness that probably most people want when you're scanning at home. But here's the thing, the Scanza isn't meant for that. A few years ago before, like I had like a flatbed scanner to be able to do it. I scanned my grandfather's like 900 slide collection on a flatbed scanner that wasn't really meant for it without like a special slide film holder. And it took me an eternity. But in the end around Christmas, we all kind of gathered around and we just kind of swiped through the pictures on an iPad. And that's what this is Using a unit like the Scanza for like a task like that would have been amazing, would have saved me a lot of time. I still would have done some like cropping, color and dust work in like Photoshop, but it would have been like way easier. The scans are also pretty large in terms of size and you can like scale these down and then punch up the resolution to one that's friendlier for printing. And, and these files are fine for easily doing small prints that you can like load up into a photo album for people. So currently when I'm scanning at home, I just picked up an Epson V700 flatbed scanner, which I'm not gonna compare the Scanza to because they're for very different audiences and for very different purposes. Scanners in this range really operate for people to just be able to kind of quickly and easily get saved images, digital copies to share around, get small prints done of their like slides and film collections that haven't been used for anything in a long time. But now I'm still gonna be critical of some things from the Scanza that I really don't like because I know you guys want some of the dirt. First off, don't try and scan an entire roll through this thing by just pulling it through the scanner. 
I did it just to try it, just to see what it was like for an example. And I already had scans of this, but it, it damaged the roll. It really visibly damaged the roll. This mark down the entire roll was not there before. It's just from these trash film holders. You can't pull it through the holder that's in the unit without like a lot of resistance. Now I don't have 110 or 126 film, but you know what? I do have Super 8 film and this thing is advertised as being able to scan eight millimeter and Super 8 film, except you definitely should not. Here's the thing, if you have old home movies, I know it can be expensive, but take them to places that are equipped to be able to do nice scans of that stuff because it is worth preserving if you can't project it or view it any longer. Don't buy a unit like the Scanza if you want to be able to transfer home movies because also that's just not how it's set up. It, see, it's not for transferring an entire movie. You scan one frame at a time with no way to make sure each frame is in the same position and it will change the color and the brightness slightly. It, it's for saving certain images in a roll of Super 8 or 8 millimeter, except that that is insane. The holder is small and will absolutely wreck up your film. You have to feed it through. And again, there's like a lot of resistance to it. Then you need to like rig up a way of holding the film. And on top of that, the scans are awful. It's just too small and it kept blowing out these frames. It's not worth it for like eight millimeter and super eight. And that's like what it comes down to for a lot of the formats besides slide film is that these holders that are gonna come into contact with the film are just not very good holders to use on film. So my advice for using a Scanza is just stick to slides. For slides, it's not bad. And finally, the price. If I wanna go buy a Kodak Scanza brand new right now, for me here in Canada, it will cost me about $225 Canadian. But I just, I feel like that for the Scanza is too much. Because here's the thing, Kodak is not the only company that is you know, putting out these scanning units like this for home use. And most of them accomplish the same thing. Really, really similar units with almost identical specs to this Kodak Scanza can be picked up from like non-recognizable brands. The Scanza is also much more expensive than these ones from Magnasonic and Jumble. They all do 22 megapixel transfers. And you know what? The Scanza and the Magnasonic and the Wolverine all use these like identical film holders. These are trashy film holders. They're not very good. They've got like ridges that come into direct contact with the film emulsion. If you're making a scanning unit to handle film, film is a sensitive material that is prone to scratching and damage. So ultimately, I don't necessarily feel like I wanna pay like $120 for the unit itself, and then like $70 for the brand name attached to it. So I'm hoping that I've looked at the Scanza from like enough sides that it puts into perspective what it's capable of doing, but also, who it's for and you know why it's fine that it exists. It's not an expensive flatbed scanner. It's not a high-end DSLR that's transferring film off of a light pad. It's not a cell phone camera scanner. And it's also not a scanner that you would find in a lab. And there are people out there that, you know, this thing is perfect for if they just want to be able to like see digital copies and share around digital files of old slides that they have. And I know that getting good scans is like an art form all in itself but I mean, sometimes it's just about the image and the significance of seeing that image again, and that can be easy to lose sight of. Thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out, and I hope that you enjoyed because I mean, I you know, I'd love to look at more like analog related products and different film scanning stuff as well in the future. And of course, uh, if you want to see like more scans and like samples and stuff of the Scanza, then that's also on the Patreon and I'll do like some extra little notes here and there as well about it. Uh, you can also like find that information in the uh, description below along with information for the PO box if you want to send a package or a box or something you got a product a thing that you like to use or you're making something you're 3d printing something to use for film you want me to take a look at it I'd love to and also speaking of super 8 and scanning super 8 and stuff uh, if you guys are looking to buy super 8 or 16 or process film or get it scanned and stuff uh, consider checking out pro 8 millimeter out in California uh, I've really enjoyed like interacting with them and you can find like a link to their website down below in the description if you want to head over there. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back next week to talk about some Super 8 cameras and I know you guys want to see that stuff. And uh, 
Now sing a sing. 